So this is video part two. I just made an Eagle library for a PIC32 breakout board. Now I'm going to use those components to draw the schematic. And then in part three, uh, I'll turn the schematic into the actual board layout and generate Gerber files so we can order the board for manufacture. Uh, here's a, a reference design. Uh, I've got the PIC32. We've got USB coming in uh, to a slide switch to go to a regulator to make our 3.3 volts. Uh, we'll have an LED on that as indicator. We've got uh, a reset button and a user button and a user LED. We've got the PIC32 with an 8 megahertz crystal resonator um, and two sets of header pins to break out the pins we're not using to the sides of the boards to go into a shield for motor controllers. So I've got my schematic open. Um, I'm going to click the library menu and say use so that Eagle knows to use the library I just made. Because really I don't have to pull components from any other library now, I've just got everything I need in that one library. So I'm going to click that add a part button, go to my library, and let's start by adding the pick. And then over here. And then power comes in to the USB connector, specifically this MB style. Power then hits a slide switch, so we can turn the board on and off. From the slide switch, it's going to go to our voltage regulator. Uh, well, it looks like I, did, I didn't get the LED. We can grab the LED from the LED library. We're using a three millimeter through hole LEDs here. We'll have our red LED show that power is working, and then eventually there'll be another LED next to that that's green. Go back to my custom library. Okay, let's add our two push buttons. We've got one push button for reset and another as user. Now we need resistors. No, looks like I didn't get resistors saved there either. Okay, go find the resistor library. And so a good size uh, through hole resistor is, looks like this one, RUS0207 slash 10. We need one for each LED, one for each push button. Uh, I guess while we're here, let's grab our capacitors. You're going to guess. Um, we can take a look at this in a second. What, what's an appropriate sized capacitor? Here, I think all the pin spacing is the same. It's just how big is that so screen drawn. Let's grab kind of like this one, 025 slash 050. So between all the power pins on the pick, we need a 0.1. So between that VDD and VSS and this VDD, and then on the input to our regulator and on the output. And we also need a polarized 10 microfarad capacitor. I'm going to guess at the size of this one. I know these ones have extra wide legs, so we can use that one. Uh, VCAP gets one of those, and the output of the voltage regulator. Okay, let's go back up to my library. And the pins we're not using, let's go up to headers. It's going to be two sets of those. And we need to be able to program the pick using the pick kit. Let's grab that. I think that's all the major components now. Oh, the oscillator. Okay, let's reorient some of these parts. That guy. 
that guy. Uh, now we need a lot of powers in brown, so let's start with brown. Those can get copied in. Uh, those are in the supply library. Ground. So let's see. Uh, VSS on the pick will have to be ground, and the oscillator needs ground. This capacitor needs ground. VSS is ground. This capacitor needs ground. Picket needs ground. VSS needs ground. And the capacitor needs ground. The USB connector needs ground. Capacitor needs ground. Regulator, capacitors, LEDs. These uh, switches are pull ups, so the switch needs ground. And then the way I've designed my shield is at the bottom, most pins will be ground. Let's start with that number of grounds. Then um, 5 volts. So V bus is going to come from the USB connector to the slide switch. And then out of the slide switch, I'm going to call that voltage 5 volts. It's only on if the slide switch is in the on position. And it goes to the regulator. And it goes to the V bus pin, and that's it. And I just need some 3.3s. So that's VDD. So VDD needs power. VDD needs power. D. Coming out of voltage regulator. 3.3 volts. These are uh, pull up resistors. And I should double check my schematic. So I was doing this guy that starts at A0 is going to be 3.3. The other one has access to 5. That'll power our motors. So I'm going to make this one get 3.3. And I'll copy one of the 5s so that we have access to 5 on the header pins. Okay, time to draw the nets. So I'm going to use the net tool. Start with the USB. So ground coming from USB and V bus coming to our slide switch. Comes out of the slide switch. We're going to rename it 5 volts. Go to V in on the regulator. And the regulator is ground. And coming out is 3.3. Power our red LED. Got a good time to give some of these values. So I'm going to hit the value button. And this is a 0 0.1 micro on the input, a 0 0.1 on the output, and a 10 on the output. And this is a red LED, and LEDs are like a 330. This is our green LED, which will be 330. Our pull-ups on our switches are 10Ks. And let's call this switch the reset switch. And this switch the user switch. Our oscillator is 8 megahertz, just to remind us. This is a 0 0.1 microfarad. This is a 0.1 microfarad. This is a 10 microfarad. Okay, let's keep going. So um, the pick oscillator. Pins. are A2 and A3. So let's kind of line up our oscillator to line up with A2 and A3.
comes a ground pin. VDD. LV bus. That should get our pick all powered up. Uh, now we can drop some labels on all the IO pins. So I'm going to extend nets out from each pin. And give each one a label. Save probably. And then I can name each one. CLR. Zero is not used yet. A1 is not used yet. Uh, I'm going to call this PGD and PGC for our programmer. So I've got a B2 and a B3. I've got a B4. And B4 is also our um, user button. And we've got A4, which is our LED. And we have a USB ID on the other side of the chip. Oh, USB 3 needs to get 3 volts. minus is a USB pin, ED plus is a USB pin. Okay, all the pins on the pick are named. Let's get it programmed. So you're going to use the programmer. Give it access to power and ground. So the first pin is MCLR, and we've got PGD and PGC. Now we can program the pick. Let's get access to those USB connectors. We've got USB ID. Plus, D minus, oops, that's not it, this one is uh, B, minus, okay. Okay, so our green LED is 
going to be connected to A4 slash LED. So maybe let's move our buttons over here to meet up here. Our user button. This is pin B4 slash user. And our reset button. It's called MCLR. Okay, and then all the pins that we're not using, we're going to hook up to these connectors so that we have access to them on another board. And here I want to make sure I put them in the right order because otherwise they won't line up in my other board. The one with 3.3 volts uh, is A0, A1, B2, B3, B4, B5. So 3.3 volts is going to be A0, A1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B3, B4, so I'm going to um, break up the user uh, pin and LED uh, just in case we don't populate them and we still want to use them as regular pins. So A4 slash LED and user will keep. And the last set, uh, B15, 14, 13, 9, 7. Okay, that looks like our main schematic. Uh, we'll save the major layout of the copper for the next video, but quickly right now we can hit the SCH to BRD to just kind of look at the components we picked and look at our board size, and it looks like everything's going to fit, so we're going to take all that and stick it on here in a 5x5 five five centimeter board, and then try to get all these wires to not crisscross so bad and draw the copper.